bless the Lord for the choir. God will increase your anointing and your grace in Jesus' name. Jesus, you're the lily of the valley. Oh, Jesus, you're the bright and morning star.
son of God, a mighty deliverer, the firstborn of the heavenlies, the lily of the valley, the savior of the world. We call you Jesus, the master of the world. Thank you for this morning. Thank you for this word. Thank you for life that you will touch. Lord, this morning you have said it is a month that we are an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. The grace and the power to manifest this grace we receive from you today in the mighty name of Jesus. You will be the Jesus in every life in this sanctuary. Those listening to the broadcast, you will be the Jesus, the master of the world. Thank you for answer prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. That amen is too weak. That amen is too weak. Are you there, church? In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. We can be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is giving us a word to start this month as he has ordained us as an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. This is a word that has been ringing in my heart. And it is a question. I'll be sharing with us on how are you defined? How are you defined? We have come to realize that if I begin to go around the sanctuary by the grace of God, I can mention the names of many of us or some of us. I look at your face. I can say this is your name. I identify you by your name. Some, I may not see their face, but their physique. I know hmm, this is Brother Oluwatosi. Oh, oh, this is Sister Onome. Mm, this is Lollipop. This is Lollipop. By their figure. Because naturally, people are identified by what others see about them. The first identification is your name. The name your parents gave to you. And people can say, yes. Yes, I know that is uh, Aki Oke. Oh, yeah, I know. That is uh, that's, uh, Aki Oke's wife, the former Ebu Oke. This, yes, that is my name. But listen, church. People are remembered not by their names, but by their definitions. People might identify you by your name. This is Brother Abraham. But people are remembered by their definition. People are remembered by the impact they have made. If the Lord or when the Lord is making you a joy of many generations, the Lord is placing your feet on the pathway to be impactful. It's placing you on the pathway to affect people around you. There are people in the scriptures that we have seen. They identify them by their name. In fact, they might be walking in line of their name. The letter when they come of age, when they realize the impact, they walk towards changing it. Some people succeed. 
succeed, but some don't succeed. Yes, we have different names, like I said. I've heard of somebody they call Gabriel, somebody they call Michael, but the Michael is a rapist. The Gabriel is an arm robber. Another they call Mary, but the Mary is an outlaw. The Mary is a Yahoo Yahoo person. So you discover that name comes up. We know ourselves, we identify ourselves by name, but what defines us on the long run is what we have done. Is the impact we have made. Whether you are an eternal excellency or a job of many generations is a function of the impact. It's a function of how well you release yourself to the one who has control of the whole world. Every question that a child of God must continually ask himself how am I defined? How? How am I defined? How am I defined? People identify you by name. How am I defined? What impact am I making? What can I be remembered for? Every child of God must remember that and walk in line with that. It's not enough to come to church. It's not enough to say, yes, I listen to that message. All the numerous messages you have listened to in the church, in the internet, on the Facebook, how much of the messages are reflected in your life? How much of the messages can men and women can remember that, ah, I heard a message about this, but I never knew it until I met this sister until I met this brother and this brother made it real. In fact, I thought it was Jesus that came to visit me when she came. In fact, I thought he was an angel. Wow! Why? She have left an indelible mark over that person. How are you defined? Some of us, especially the men that know about football, we know the person, one man who played World Cup. I remember, I think I just finished my youth service that time in 1986. I just finished my youth service. And it was World Cup time. In fact, we were just about rounding up because I was still in the state. In uh, the old Cross River State, I was sitting there and we're watching, and everybody was talking about him. Got talking about him. They say Maradona, Maradona, Maradona. And after the World Cup, people were still talking of who? Maradona. Why? Because of his skill on the field of play. Because of his skill. That when he's going, defender we think he's going, he was going like this, but he'll go like this. So he was able to triple, triple, triple. So that man was noted for his dribbling prowess, ability. Now, what was baffling to me after that, that there was a past president in this nation of Nigeria. And people called him also Maradona. How many of us remember that first, first president of Nigeria? That they were calling Maradona. Can I see your hand up? Oh, praise God. We remember the president they called Maradona. Why did they call him Maradona? Because we tell everybody, this is what he's going to do. This is what he's going to do. And before he gets to that day, he will change like this. Hey! They say Maradona. If you ask some people, they might not even remember the name of that president.
president. They don't know. But they remember that there was Maradona as president of Nigeria. Why? That was the impression. That was the message he sent around. He was dribbling, 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 dribbling Nigeria. Dribble, 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 dribble. You must know that your impact on your generation matters a lot. And that is how you are defined. You are not defined by David. You are just identified as David. You are just identified as a guy. You are just identified as Buki. You are just identified as Informa. You are just identified as Maria. No, that is identification. And identification does not leave a lasting impression on your world. Hello, church? Your identification does not leave a lasting remark on your work. What leaves a lasting remark is your definition. Your impact. How you have affected people. How you have impacted people. How you have been a blessing to people. How you have led people in the course of righteousness in the plan of God. So everybody must aspire to be impacted impactful. You must aspire to affect your generation. That is actually what matters. When Jesus says, said in the book of Matthew chapter 28, Mark chapter 16, the end, he said, go into the world and preach the gospel to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things I have told you, and lo, I am with you always. Now, he was saying, go and impact your world. He was saying, don't stay at a particular position. Don't say, ah, thank God, I've gotten a fine job. Ah, let me relax. No, in fact, that is the beginning. Because that job is a tool. That job is an equipment. That job is a means to impact your world. I've known of people that got great jobs and they erroneously thought the job was them and them and their wife and their children alone. And they sat down very complacent. They sat down not affecting their generation. And before you know it, they lose the job. Before the, you know it, they gave problems to their company. Because of them, their company folded up. Because they are not fulfilling purpose. Church, this month is a month that God is making us eternal excellency. Joy of many generations that you may impact your world. And the Lord is going to help you to do that in the mighty name of Jesus. I didn't hear that amen well. I said, the Lord, we help you in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's look at the case of Rahab. Rahab, in the book of Judges, we won't read it. The Bible recorded Rahab as an harlot. She was an harlot. We all know what harlots do. They sell their body for money. When you talk to adults these days, they will tell you clearly, eh, what? Eh, my father is not working, Your, the mother is late, and me and my younger ones, nobody to take care of us, and I feel so that I, I so that my children will, my younger ones will not die, will not die in our family. They go into pros prostitution. They had the mind, they, they felt no, this is the only way. There are some people in that situation, they will just say, No, no, I will not be defined as being a prostitute and they trust God because God is an awesome God because the Bible says as you have spoken in my ears so will I do unto you even Jesus all the people that went to him the Bible says Jesus will say what do you want believe it thou that can do it so it is what you believe that eventually comes to you. Rhea was an alert. But Rhea had heard about the children of Israel. Rhea had heard about them, a desire that this life she was living, she was tired of it. She had gotten money out of it. She built her house even on top of the wall. It's only the rich that could do that those days. She 
started the Red Sea. She heard that their God had been killing, destroying kingdoms before, before them. Ha! She was living in Jericho. And they have been hearing. Now she heard again that their God divided the river Jordan for them. Her heart and many other people were no more with them. They were completely, completely brought down. They just needed salvation. She was not the only one that heard the news of the Israelites when they were living in Jericho. She was not the only one. Many of them heard it. Many of them were jittery. Many of them were afraid. But from record, she was the only one that identified that though I've gone wrong, though I've done something terrible, now this God of Israel, I will run to him. I will identify with Israel. She was waiting. And that was when, when she saw the opportunity, she took it. When you are tired of your life, when you are tired of your situation, when you are tired of what you are going through, it is then you will be praying for change. When the opportunity comes, because you have prayed, you will recognize the opportunity. This lady recognized the opportunity for a change in her destiny, for a change in her definition, for a change in her life. She recognized it when she met with the spies. I want to believe Rahab was not the first person that the two spies from Joshua met. She was not. They have, when they entered the city, I presume they must have been tired. There was no car at that time, so they were trekking. They must have looked for where they were selling food. And then they must have eaten. Don't forget, they went to spy out the land. And by the time they met Rahab, they were about to leave. And that was why when news came around that Rahab had them, he, she hid them in the roof. And then when those looking for, for these spies, when they have gone, she led them down and led them through the window. So apparently, the spies had finished their assignment. And if they have finished their assignment, that means they have gone around the city. They have done this. They have checked that. They have checked it. They have done the surveillance they were sent to go and do. They have all their data. They had anything. So they must have met different people. They must have spoken to different people. They must have eaten in one place. They must have asked questions in one place. But the only person that opened her door and her heart for them was Rahab. Rahab was ready for a definition change. Rahab was tired of being called the allot. Rahab the Allot, Rahab the Allot, everybody knew her. She had made money out of it. She was not hiding that she was a prostitute. I imagine she even had, she had younger, younger prostitutes. You know, all these big prostitutes. When they have done the prostitution to some time, they too discover that they can't get much money. Because many of these men, they want younger one. So they recruit younger prostitutes. Who they can give out to men. She must have gotten to that stage. But right inside her, she was eager for a definition change. My life has got to change. I cannot continue like this. And I saw the Lord is speaking to somebody. As you are listening to this message, the Lord wants you to desire a change. Anything you are known with, any definition men have given you, any definition your profession has given you, any definition your character has given you, there is room for change of definition this morning. There is room for you to say, I will not be like this again. And that was exactly what happened. Rehab submitted to the God of Israel. Rehab joined herself with the people of God. No wonder, no wonder that when the lineage of the Lord Jesus is mentioned, Rehab is in the lineage of the Lord Jesus. She abandoned her old definition our old profession, our old way of life, and embraced the gospel of Jehovah God. As somebody here, we decide the definition I have before now. Maybe yours, you are not a prostitute. Maybe like Zacchaeus, 
you have been a, a tax collector collecting illegally from people doing yahoo yahoo going to different means and get, getting money from people illegally Zacchaeus the day he met the Lord Jesus that was the day his life changed his definition changed Zacchaeus said everybody that have cheated I will return to him or her multiples your definition how are you defined how are you known let's go to the book of Jeremiah Jeremiah chapter 1 Jeremiah chapter 1 we read from verse 4 we want to see how God normally plans destiny and assignment for people and it now depends on you to decide you want to take on the definition God has given to you yes you can read for me then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms, to root out and to pull down, and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Thank you very much. The Lord was speaking to Jeremiah as the Lord is speaking to us now hearing his word he has sent us to this generation maybe you are a prayer warrior you are an usher that ushering means organization ordering things well putting things in order that's the calling you are a singer you bring down the glory of God. You sing praises. You worship God in every area of your calling. You must not despise your calling. Don't despise your assignment. Don't despise what God has spoken to you. Jeremiah felt he was more. Uh -uh. But the Lord repeated it. Say not that you are small. Verse 7. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Whatsoever he put in your heart, the song he put in your heart, the assignment, you get to certain places, things are not just in order. You are an usher in your church. You will just realize somehow something is coming to within you. He's bumbling inside. And what the daddy wants to do is to put everything in order. It's a pity that in our nation, Nigeria, we're praying for God to put orderliness. Every time I drive around, every time we go home, different thing, you will see the height of disorderliness. And I pray in my heart. Sometimes people say it's government, government. This is not government. I tell people this is not government. It is the people. When the roads have been done, properly laid out, why should two, three cars parked side by side and a three-lane road, you have turned it to one-lane road and there's so much order and they tell you they are ready to beat you. They are ready to fight with you. Orderliness. You might have that grace. The Lord will inspire you to do certain things. 
what I want everyone to know is that there is a, an assignment God has given you. Aspire to affair your generation with it. Do not say, I'm a child. Do not say, what can I do? In this my community, beloved, you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the world. Even in your estate, even in your community, do you know that many people of the society, they are tired of those leaders that steal the money, that don't care for development, they care for themselves, their family alone. They are tired of it. If God is raising you, if God is inspiring you, that in your community, you want to establish orderliness and righteousness and prudence and good probity, financial probity, you can present yourself in your community. It is when it's getting big that you need clearance from God because a lot of the politicians, they are or call team members. I say it all the time because it's what I've heard. There are many things one cannot say, one cannot say publicly. A lot of evil, a lot of unrighteousness, you must not join them. Especially when you know it's difficult for you to change them. When your local streets, in your very local estate, let people see that God still has God-fearing children that can be accountable, that can do things in orderly manner because it's a grace God has given you. The Lord was speaking to this young man. He said, do not say you are a child. Any of you listening to this message, you know the area God has gifted you. In your area of giftings, you will live in dominion. In the area God has given you, you will do the assignment with ease. Do not allow time to go because time is going, church. The time is going. And you will give an account to heaven what you have done with the talent. We all know the story of the talent that Jesus spoke. A man going on a journey and gave some five talents, some two talents, some one talent. And the Bible says the man with five talents made gain of additional five. The law will require every one of us, we that are preachers, we that are pastors, we that are mentors, we raise others in the counsel of God. We shall give account. We encourage others to fully grow into God's assignment in their lives. We will give an account. You are a prayer warrior. Do it lead in your prayer. Sometimes in the church, sometimes with individuals. Go ahead because we shall all receive the reward from the master. Years are going. What are you defined with? You are not defined by the number of years you have spent. I've told her we are not defined by our name. You know the name of Jab Jabesh. Jabesh rings bell to us. In the book of Chronicles, the mother gave birth to Jack, and it was in a and in a scenario of sorrow, in a scenario of pain, in a scenario of abandonment. That woman lost the, the, the husband, maybe the, the in-laws abandoned her, and she was suffering when she gave birth to Jabesh. It was in the time of sorrow. But the Bible says when Jabesh was born. He grew up with that mark upon him. A child of sorrow. A child of sorrow. A child of punishment. A child of misfortune. A child of bad luck. But the Bible says, Jabesh prayed to the God of heaven because he realized there's got to be a change of definition. Church, what is your definition? How are you defined? In your street, in your neighborhood, how are you defined? In the house of God, how are you defined? How are you defined in the house of God? What are you known with? In your generation, how are you defined? It is your definition that makes you leave marks in the
the sons in the sands of time. Now let's look at the case of those who live very long years. Let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 5. Genesis chapter 5. We'll read from verse 21. Genesis chapter 5. And Enoch lived sixty and five years and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah three hundred years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were three hundred sixty and five years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. And Methuselah lived an hundred eighty and seven years and begat Lamech. And Methuselah lived after he begat Lamech seven hundred eighty and two years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Methuselah were 960 and 9 years, and he died. Thank you very much. Here we see the story of the life of Enoch and the life of his son, Methuselah. Enoch was a man that loved God. He knew he was called of God to affect his generation. He knew he was not just one of the people that came upon the earth. The total years that Enoch lived was 365 years. But in those years, the Bible recorded that Enoch walked with God. Enoch sought to please God. Enoch sought to bring pleasure to God. In all his dealings, he saw his life as an avenue to, to offer sacrifices to God, to honor God, to affect his generation. And the Bible recorded that Enoch walked with God to the extent that he was not, when it was time to die, he so much with God that God took him. This man did not see death. Methuselah, his son, was the longest living human being upon the earth. Methuselah spent 969 years, about three times the years his father lived. But nothing was recorded against Methuselah except the fact that he gave birth to Lamech and probably many more children and he was just living and just living and just living. It didn't affect his generation. He knocked what we call and it was through him great things happened. He went to be with the Lord when it was time. He was transited. He did not die. Look at somebody like David. The total year that David lived was about 70 years. Though when he was dying, they say he was really old. But when you go through the scriptures, we discover that David lived plus or minus one or two years, 70. But David did so much for the Lord. David fought battles, restored dignity and honor to the name of the Lord. David defended the name of the Lord. David made sure nobody spoke against the Lord. Uh -uh. David ruled his people and ruled them in righteousness. Anybody that didn't please God, David made sure that no, and not where you, you shouldn't be there. David set things in order. In fact, he wanted to build the house of God. But God said, no, you cannot. But he provided abundance of material for the provision. David loved God. But he didn't live more than about 70, 71 years. You discover that it is not the number of years, but the quality of of your time with God. The quality of what you have done to your generation. Somebody say, what of those who are not born again? And that is why you have to be born again. Because you cannot have rulership without the spirit of God. 
without being born again. You must be born again. But some people so are making problems. They are making impact. They are not born again. Those are the people that the Bible says all their works they have done. They have done good works. They will, re they will receive the reward upon this earth. But when they get to heaven, no work will be recorded to them for them. Because they are not born again. They have not accepted the Lord. The Bible says, it's only the name of Jesus that has been given, whereby we can be saved. And Jesus promised to go and prepare a place for us. So if you have not accepted him, you have no place in heaven. He has not gone to prepare for you because you have not accepted him. When you have done well upon the earth, yes, you get the reward of the earth, you, you might have this, you might have that, but not the heavenly reward. But we thank God because we, as we live here, the reward we receive is not that of the world. As you receive the reward upon the earth, we receive reward in heaven. You know, Peter asked Jesus, we have left all and followed thee. We have left father, we have left mother, we have left sister, we have left everybody and we have followed thee. What shall be our reward? And the Bible says, Jesus said, anyone that has left father, mother, brother, sister, learn anything, will receive in this earth hundred folds and in the world to come eternal life. So, for us to have the gain also in eternal life, you must accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. You must be born again. And that's why I'm calling everybody listening to this broadcast, everybody in the church, you must be born again. It's not enough to come to church. It's not enough to listen to all the messages. You must decide. I want to be born again so that my labor upon the earth we have impact also in heaven. If you have done very good upon the earth, yes, you will receive reward here. But I tell you, how many years are people able to live? So, if it's only this war, you have all your gain. Apostle Paul which said, of all men, we are the most miserable. But we need the reward also in heaven. And that is when we have given our life to Christ. When we, have, when we have surrendered our life to him and when we say, God, help me. And the Lord will help you in the name of Jesus. I want to read part of the, the statement the Lord laid in my heart that I wrote down. A man might be identified by his name, but he is remembered by his definition. Definition means what he is known for. Your contribution to society defines you. Not the literal meaning of your name. I said that. Somebody is Michael. Somebody is Gilbert. But they are rapists. They are armed robbers. It shouldn't be. So it is not the name. It is what you contribute. I mentioned the case of Maradona and the former president of Nigeria that they call Maradona. Mary Magdalene was another person. Mary Magdalene was known with what? Was possessed with demons. She was possessed with demons. But when she decided, when she met the Lord Jesus, the Lord cast out the devil and she started serving God, following Jesus. And when Jesus resurrected, she was the first to see the Lord. Wow. What a great honor. It's because she loved God. She loved Jesus. She loved Jesus. She loved the message of Jesus. She loved eternal life that Jesus preached. So she was always there. To the extent when Jesus resurrected, she was the first. It is also recorded Mary Magdalene was also like a prostitute sleeping with men, possessed with demons, with devil. I mean, somebody possessed with devil. What do you expect? All evil were in, in, in her hand. But when she met the Lord Jesus, when she submitted her life, her 
Jesus Christ, she engaged, she embraced everything Jesus taught. That God gave her deeper understanding. How come even the disciples they were scolding her? Why should she do it? But the Spirit of God revealed unto her, go and anoint Jesus. Not just that, she was the first to see the Master after resurrection. Her destiny changed. Her definition changed. Beloved brother and sister, take a decision that there must be a definition change over my life. So you just come to church. Ah, eh, who is it? That sister. We don't know that sister. Ah, that sister has been coming long. I've even forgotten her name. But they cannot say this is what this sister is noted for. Your definition. How are you defined? Not only in the house of God, in your community, everywhere you go. As you submit to the Lord, you can change the previous definition you are known for. I say Joshua was known for dividing the promised land. He commanded the people to serve God. And during his reign, he, he stayed there and in an excel. Hmm. The number of years we spend on earth, on earth also does not define you. Hmm. Methuselah lived 969 years and as his only achievement was to give birth to Lamech. His father Enoch lived 365 years but he walked with God. David lived about 70 years and do so much for the Lord. What are you known for? How are you defined? What are you doing for the Lord? Are you telling story? You see, when I get up, I want us to know most of the time your success is propelled by your service to God. I've said it many times here. I've said it on many of these various opportunities. The success you achieve in life, the grace, the abundance you achieve in life is propelled by how much you have given yourself to the Lord. As long as you submit yourself to the Lord, it causes you to grow more. We know the story of the fig tree that Jesus commanded to dry up. Why should Jesus dry up the, the, the fig tree? No, there are certain things that Jesus actually did that people will not understand because he was doing things of deep things of the kingdom and he was using it to teach them. The Bible says Jesus was hungry and he went to a fig tree he saw with plenty of leaves, robust. And Jesus went expecting to see fruits, but he did not see fruits to eat. And the Bible recorded that. And Jesus said, may no one eat fruit out of thee again. And immediately, the fig tree dried up. And that is a lesson for us as children of God. You have been born again. You have enjoyed healing from God. You have enjoyed protection from God. God. You have enjoyed blessings from God. But what has Jesus enjoyed from you? How many lives have you encouraged to serve God? How many people have you led to Christ? You ask yourself, am have I been a faithful tree to God? A faithful servant to God? Am I bringing profit to my God? If you are not doing things that will lead people to Christ, that will make somebody say, Ah, God, thank you. You use this girl. You use this man. Then you must ask yourself a question. Hey, how am I being defined? You are defined by the lies you touched. You are defined by the people you impact upon. You are defined by life you raise for the Lord. Look at that word. Let's go to it again. Jeremiah chapter 1. We'll be closing from there. Jeremiah chapter 1. We read 
for, from that, you can take it from verse, uh, let's see, verse 5. Then said, uh, okay, before, okay, start. Verse 5, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand, and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms, to root out and to pull down, and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Thank you very much. Beloved, I want you to know you are a vessel in the hands of God. The Lord has been giving you his word, has prepared you all this year so that you can bring glory to the Lord. So that you can be a voice to him anywhere you are. And what will I tell them? Jesus said, do not bother, do not be worried about what you will say. Because at that time, Holy Spirit will give you all trance, unction. Just get ready, tell yourself, I want to be a vessel in God's hands. God wants to send you, send you to many people, maybe where you are living. So many prostitutes live there. Or so many yao yao boys. Some people are always drinking kai kai, drinking hot drink. And in the night, you don't know where they go, but most of the time, some of them are robbers, some of them are thieves, some of them are doing evil. You live around them. Please share the word of God with them. Share the word of God with them. Do not keep quiet. Look at what God spoke to this boy. He said, Ah, I have put my word in your mouth. I have touched your tongue. Know that God is touching your tongue. God is anointing you as you are listening to this message. Once you are listening to this message, the grace of God is coming upon you. And the Lord is raising you to go to all the world and declare the gospel. Go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is Lord brother go forth go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is Lord sister go forth go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere go
glory. I shall be used for your glory. I shall be used for your honor. Empower me, O Lord. Thank you, Lord, for answer prayers. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. The Bible says, and Jesus told the disciples in the book of Acts, chapter 1. He said, do not depart from Jerusalem until you are endued with what? Power from on high. Do not depart. So now, church, you are going to pray for, pray for the power of the Holy Ghost. Because without the power, one cannot have a successful outing to declare the gospel of Jesus. We all know the sons of Skiba. They were casting out demons in the name of Jesus. When they were not endued with power, they suffered for it. Church, you are going to close your head. Little Lord, endue me with power from on high. Endue me with power. Power for evangelism. Power to declare the gospel. Power to win souls for the Lord. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Father, Lord, I receive power. Endue me with power from on high. Endue me, Lord, a fresh anointing. Grant to me the scepter to win souls. The scepter to command souls into the kingdom. The scepter to command souls into the kingdom. The scepter to command souls into the kingdom of God. And do me with power from on I receive power from on I. Church, I want you to pray. Empower me, O Lord. Empower me, O Lord. The Bible says, Thou shalt receive power when the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and uttermost parts of the world. I receive that power. I receive that grace, I receive that anointing Holy Spirit, a new power over my ministry, a new power over my life, over this church, over these people, over my family, the power of the living God, the power of the living God the grace of God, pray church and do me with power from on high, and do me with power from on high, and do me with grace from on high and do me with anointing from on high in Jesus name we have prayed when the power of God comes upon your life, all works of darkness, sickness, disease, failure around you will disappear. Hello, church. Failure will disappear. <laughs> the power of God in my life. The power of God in my life. He has broken the iron gate and given me victory. The power of God in my life, in my life. The power of God in my life, in my life. The power of God in my life. It has broken, it has broken the iron gate and given me victory. Victory!
shout a winning amen. Father, we want to thank you for your mighty hand. Your word has gone forth to prepare ready a people for you as vessels in your hands. We've looked at our definition. How are we defined? How are we affecting our generation? What report do you have for us? How are you assessing and evaluating us? Lord, I want to pray that the power of resurrection will come upon everyone in this sanctuary and as many are listening or we later listen to this message that the power of God we activate their life, we quicken their mother bodies and send them forth into the world to be a light to their generation, to be a sword to the world in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I come against every barrier and every inhibition, anything that prevents them from being who God has called them to do. Is it discouragement? Is it lack of finance? Is it lack of joy? Things are not working in their marriage. I pray that the power of resurrection will turn their situations around. We overturn things in their favor. In the mighty name of Jesus. A new grace, a new power. We carry them. The Lord, they begin to redefine their own life. Rehab redefined our life. Mary Magdalene redefined our life. Jabesh redefined his life. I pray that the power of God for redefinition will begin to hit everybody here and as many as are listening in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare your lives shall be for signs and for wonders. I declare your lives shall bring glory to the name of the Lord. I declare your life, you will illuminate your wall, and kings shall come to your rising. Hey, 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 hey. You did not hear that. I say by the power of God, you will begin to illuminate, and kings shall come to your rising. In the name of Jesus. Heaven's glory is renewed over your lives. Heaven's glory is released over your lives. Lord, I want to pray for as many as are sick here. I command every pain. I command every infirmity. I command every disease. Get out of their bodies. In the name of Jesus. Jesus was wounded for your transgressions. He was bruised for your iniquities. The chastisement of your peace was upon him. And by his stripes, I command you are healed in the name of Jesus. No more pain. Begin to touch everywhere that you have pain. Begin to touch that place and say, you pain, be gone. Be gone, unbelief. You pain, be gone. You disease, be gone. You lack, be gone. Barrenness, be gone. Hey, bad Lord, be gone. Begin to declare, church, begin to declare. Begin to say, be gone. Sicknesses, be gone. Be gone, be gone. Toiling and toiling and, and walking and no result. Be gone, be gone. Be gone, favor of God. I command your favor up, upon your children. I command your healing upon your children. Be thou glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. We want to thank you who join us on the broadcast. We believe the Lord has blessed you. Please join us again every Sunday as from 9 o'clock, but many times we start before 9 o'clock. Join us every Sunday on Christ the Rock Foundation Chapel channel. On Wednesday by 12 noon, join us on Reverend Akioke Facebook channel. You want to contact us, you can use this number. You can use this number. Uh, 0803 340-9097 you want to use email just write Christ the Rock Foundation Chapel at 